finally, oh my god, the lighting is terrible. What the fuck? I have to get a new camera. This camera is dog shit. Um, okay. So, I am finally getting back to reviewing the fucking Batman movies. Um, since I'm doing a Christopher Nolan marathon, I have seen Oppenheimer, and I loved it. I've already done a community post about that. And I, I'm, I think I'm just going to review them out of order. Um, I might not, but I, since I already reviewed the Batman films, I'm going to just... Because I've already reviewed Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. So I'm going to finish it off with The Dark Knight Rises. Which was released in 2012. 2012. And is the final of The Dark Knight trilogy. Final one with Christian Bale. Final one directed by Christopher Nolan. And yeah. The Dark Knight. Made in the year of 2012. Directed by Christopher Nolan. I think it was written and directed by Christopher Nolan. And his brother I think helped with it. And starring Christian Bale, Michael Caine, Morgan Freeman, Re, uh, uh, Gary Oldman, all reprising their roles. You also have Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Anne Hathaway, the chick from Inception that was evil in that film. Uh, you've got Tom Hardy as Bane. You also have other returning cast members like Liam Neeson as Ra's al Ghul from the first one. Just very briefly makes a comeback. And... Other, oh yeah, Killian Murphy as well, as Scarecrow, makes a, another cameo in this one as well. So yeah, The Dark Knight Rises. Basically, what the plot of this movie is. Got this villain by the name of Bane. Bane is a guy with a really fucked up mask, because he got a, a fucked up injury, which we learn later on in the movie. And essentially... The start of the film is this kind of drug or this kind of gang member thing going on, this dirty thing going on, and whatever, don't cop or whatever, just this business thing going on, whatever, um, on a plane. And essentially, they're looking for a guy named Dr. Pavel and a guy named Bane, right? Because they heard that this Bane guy is a dangerous ass motherfucker. So essentially, they get on the plane, there's a bunch of these people tied up with fucking um, bags on their head and Aidan Gillen fellow fucking Irish actor plays this guy who's like intimidating all of them and like where's Bane blah 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 and they want to throw the, these guys out the, the plane and then Bane turns out to be the guy with the mask he's fucking people up and I'm getting an awesome ass action sequence of him crashing the plane throwing people out Shooting people, blowing people up, and escaping, and crashing a plane, and blowing the fucker up. So, another awesome opening sequence, just like the last film, except I prefer the opening sequence of the last one, but still, great opening sequence. We go back to Gotham City, and everyone is still mourning the loss of Harvey Dent at the end of The Dark Knight. And, basically... Everyone in Gotham City is convinced that Batman killed Harvey Dent. Because that's what was implied at the end of The Dark Knight. So, Gary Oldman makes a speech and he's going to talk about the truth with Harvey Dent. But he's still not ready about the fact that he pointed a gun to his family and all this other shit. So, essentially Gotham is having a lot of problems. It's having a lot of gang like gangs and fucking crime happening. And it's just saying, guy is dangerous and... You know, and you also have Anne Hathaway's cat woman who's causing some trouble robbing things. Selena Kyle is also in this. Fuck me, Anne Hathaway's hot, by the way. Jesus, hey. And so you have that, and Commissioner Gordon's kind of struggling with, you know, the cops. He's like, it'd be great to have the Batman back. But Bruce Wayne has vanished for eight years, and so has, obviously, Batman. And he's a little bit crippled, not crippled, but he's like a bit kind of has some, um, I suppose, um, issues with the stick. He's in pain, you know? And Alfred's taking care of him. And he's basically been a shot away, and there's like a party going on, and, you know, Selena Kyle's um, maid, and she ends up stealing uh, the pearls that Martha had when she got shot, when he got, she got shot in Batman Begins. And essentially, as the film's going on, um, 
you know, they want Bruce Wayne to come back and do a thing, something for Gotham City. Um, and Michael Caine wants him to get out, meet someone. There's a girl named Miss Tate, who is played by the girl that was in Inception. And he wants to flirt with her. Oh, she's nice, you know, she's a nice woman. You should get with her, you should flirt with her. All this other kind of stuff, you know. And um, essentially, he's doing all this. And all of this crime is starting to happen um, in Gotham City. There's bombs going off, there's bad guys everywhere. And Bane is planning to cause havoc. And his gangsters plan to cause havoc. And you have Catwoman who is causing havoc. But Catwoman is just like an anti-hero. Who's like stealing people, fucking over people with... Uh, Gang members fighting bad guys, whatever. You also have a cop played by Joseph Gordon Levitt, who also believes in the Batman and is going around trying to stop people. And he knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman. He goes, you know, we met before, we need a symbol, you got to come back, blah, 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 and all that. And the good chunk of the first half of the film is like trying to be like, okay, is he going to come back, you know? So during this night, he ends up going back to his old Bat Cave from. Batman Begins, rebuilding it, not rebuilding it, but then going and basically going to come back as Batman. So it's causing problems with him and Alfred. It's like, maybe you need to just settle down. Alfred just wants the best for him. And Alfred's also carrying the guilt from the last film, the fact that Rachel Dawes passed away because she got killed by the Joker. And she wrote a letter saying, oh, I don't want to be with you and all this shit. So he's still carrying that guilt. And you also have people in the business, the people being fired from their own company, of, uh, of, uh, in, you know, Wayne being uh, fired from his own company. You have Lucius, who comes back and helps him out with a few things again, played by Morgan Freeman, and he's obviously he's resigned since the last film. Um, And... Essentially, Batman comes back, tries to fuck bad guys up. Essentially then, the whole city kind of gets targeted again, just like in the last two films, especially the last one. Bane ends up leading a bunch of armed robber of, of gangsters, armed criminals, stuff, to a place, shooting in a bank, blows up, there's many bombs all around the city of Gotham, being blown up including a really fucking incredible sequence with a fucking football stadium being ex like fucking blown up and him giving a speech to everyone uh you also have commissioner gordon who's in hospital because he tries to go and stop Bane from earlier and he gets broken then batman is teaming up with catwoman and he fights her and he ends up being led into a trap where he gets his back broken and is stuck in a kind of prison and it's kind of back to square one where he was in Batman Begins and he literally has to rise and jump over up this gigantic fucking wall to get out and stop um Bane he was causing havoc and you have Joseph Gordon Levitt out there eventually Gary Ullman gets up and tries to help as well and trying to stop all these fucking criminals and try trying to stop uh, Bane, who was basically just causing havoc. And then Batman has to stop Bane, because Bane is going to blow up the entire city. And he does that. Gets in a fucking flying Batmobile, which is introduced in this film. It's fucking awesome. And has to stop Bane. So it's up to Batman to stop Bane, and, you know, Joseph Gordon Levin, Levitt fucking helps out. And eventually, Batman dies in the end, sacrifices himself. And... Um, you find out your woman is actually a villain as well and is the, the daughter of Ra's al Ghul and she believes that Bruce Wayne murdered him. We also have visions of Ra's al Ghul as well. We also have Ice and a corrupt fucking scarecrow, Kenny and Murphy, in a scene where he's a judge and making people walk across ice. We got the funeral of Bruce Wayne. Gary Oldman's character finds out that he's Batman in a fucking iconic, just epic fucking scene. Um, Michael Caine breaks down crying. And then we find out that Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character is actually Robin. 
and then he goes to the Batcave at the end, setting up a potential Robin spin-off trilogy, but that never happened. That's the movie in a summary. Now, what do I think of this film? I fucking love this movie. This movie is a fucking perfect, perfect conclusion to an awesome fucking trilogy. Like, where do I begin? <laughs> fucking hell. This movie manages to be massive. It is the biggest of the three of them, right? The size and scope of The Dark Knight is crazy with all the big city shots and explosions and amazing special and practical effects. And all the practical effects in this film are incredible, right? But this manages to be bigger than that. Now, it's not as good as The Dark Knight, but it is fucking phenomenal. And it ends up being this epic finale, and it wraps up the trilogy really fucking well. And there's a lot I'm going to talk about, right? First of all, love the opening sequence with Bane. And I love Tom Hardy as Bane. And I love Bane as the villain. I'm going to get into that now. I need a drink. One second. Okay, so I'm back. Um, Yeah, so, like, first of all, Bane is phenomenal. He is a phenomenal threatening villain. And he's up there with Heath Ledger's Joker. Now, he's not as good as Heath Ledger's Joker. He's not as good as, like, Paul Dano as the Riddler. But... He is phenomenal, and obviously better than whatever the fuck that fucking thing was in Batman and Robin. But, like, you got this opening sequence, right, where you have, okay, get the logo popping up, black, love the black fucking Warner Brothers logo, the, the fucking uh, Sync Copy DC logo, and then you have the another shot of the fucking bats, like, a, you know... The, of the bat symbol in the first one it was all the bats flying around and the second one was the big fire and then in the third one you have that another one so you get this sort of moment where it's a shot of gary Oldman, and it's a very well done shot you know very well done shot of him like i believe he's like i knew harvey dent he was a great guy he was a friend he was an inspiration to us all. And you have the photo of him behind like, and I believe in Harvey Dent, and they're all clapping. And it's at this press conference. And just that opening line alone, when you're like, fuck this, you feel so bad for Commissioner Gordon. And Gary Oldman, once again, does a great job as his character. You know, you sympathize with him, you feel bad for him. And it's like, because of what happened in the last movie with him pointing the gun to his fucking family. So... You believe that. And then you just get into this fucking awesome opening sequence. Like, and I mean awesome fucking opening sequence, right? You get brilliant shot. Dun, 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 with fucking phenomenal music as well. Dun, 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 You know, brilliant shot and a big fucking plane flying. And all that, right? Flying and it's just like great. And then you get just this amazing shot of Aiden Gillen standing there looking sinister. And all these people there. And he's like, hello, Dr. Pavel. Well, I want to know where he is. Nice to meet you. I'm the guy. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go on the plane. There's so much more talk. He's like, what are you here for? That's what I'm asking you. Come on, let's go. And all that. Like, let's go. So he's shaking hands, gets on the plane. He's like, okay. And it flies and stuff like that. And puts bags on heads and it's like this sinister opening and in that moment you're like oh fuck what's gonna happen you know and you get this just really nice intense opening right it's like i want to know something we're gonna grab these suspects okay grab the money grab the bag it's like you know like that i want to know who bane is you know who is this Bane? who the hell is this bang guy you're not gonna know you know and you're kind of like oh shit you know and he's like, yeah. So he's like, or you're going to have to tell him. He's like, tell us who your boss is. You know, and they start opening it. Or we'll kill you. And he's going to throw the fucking guys. Like, we'll shoot you. And they're threatening to throw them out of the plane. He's like, no, you're not going to talk. Okay. What about you? What about you? And all that. We'll throw it. And he's about to, I think he does throw him. Or I can't remember if he does throw him. He's like, ah, you know. 
And he's like, what about you? It's like, come on, we got to do this. It's like, yeah, you know. And then you just get the fucking most badass fucking iconic line ever. He's like, yo, get over there. You know, I have the gun to his head. And, like, first of all, the fucking way it's edited and the music, the dun 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 and just the, the overall size and scale of the shots with the fucking playing, it's just excellent. And, like, Christopher Nolan's a genius. And, like, as I said, I when I watch Following, like, you can see how far he's come as a director. You know, this is fucking massive size and scale, scope. It's like, grabs him and he's like, what are you doing? And then fucking Bane just says... Perhaps you should ask yourself why you would shoot a man before throwing him out of a plane. It's like, at least you can talk. What are you doing? It's like, oh, yes, I do. I can talk, you know. And Tom Hardy's voice as Bane, he's just great. And the muscle and, like, you can see a bit of Tom Hardy, but you don't as well. Do you know what I mean? You don't always, like, see Tom Hardy in the role, and he just really goes into this character, he's like, I don't know what's happening, he's like, takes the hood off, he's like, who is he, he's like, whoa, he's like, oh, who can you tell me about this Bane guy, he's like, yes, I know, it's, I don't know, and all that stuff, and you get that fucking awesome, awesome fucking sequence, and he's just like, so he's like, what are we doing, he's like, so what can you tell me about him, and stuff like that, you know, oh, he's not crazy, and all that, and it's like, so what's your plan? What's your plan here? And then he says, it doesn't, what, what are you doing here? It's like, who are you guys? And stuff. And he goes, it doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. And all that. And it's like, it's like, really? Yeah. And what's your plan? And he's like, crashing this plane. Dun, 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 dun. And it's like, oh, shit. You know, and then not only that. But then, just before that scene, you also have him saying, like, if I took that off, would you die? If I took that thing off your face, would you die? He's like, it would be extremely painful for you and all that. And they're like, oh, shit, you know? And it's just every line he gives is so fucking chilling. Now, look, he's not as good as Heath Ledger as the Joker. But... Tom Hardy's still a threatening villain. And I, I do like Venom, but like I think he's more threatening as Bane. You know, he, he just, he has the fucking screen presence of Bane, you know? So you get that open scene, it's like, what's your plan? Crashing this plane, you got the planes and there's fucking people coming in. It's like, oh shit, he's like, no. It's like, oh, he's like, oh, fuck. He's fucking people up, he's throwing them out. Like, ah, he's like, Pff. and then he has like a device and he's, he has a rope and he's like, oh, and they're crashing the plane, like, oh, shit, and the plane's, like, falling, and shit, and there's people flying in the air, he's like, oh, God, he's like, come on, what are you doing, he's like, shooting, he's like, he's like, no, fucking him up, and it's just like, oh, shit, and he's like, oh, crap, oh, shit, you know, and it's just this awesome sequence of the fucking plane flying around, the, the camera work, and the camera work is just incredible, like, this is the thing about Nolan, his fucking camera work in this film and just in a lot of his movies is incredible he is such a talented fucking filmmaker and you're there like oh shit you know he's there like oh you know he's there blowing shit up and bits of the plane falls off and he has a rope and you have a shot of bane like that and he's like yeah and he's like no blows it up and boom fucking plane falls and people are falling out he's fucking up and they're like yeah let's go and they get in and the plane flies off, and people are dead, and, you know, and it's just like, and it's like, dun, 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 across the Gotham City, and you're like, oh, shit, so, instantly, you just have that amazing fucking sequence of, like, in the first few minutes of him being like, oh, this guy's a fucking threat, you know, this guy is a fucking threat, and I like that, and I love the fact, and I only saw this now, that what Joker and Harvey Dent done in the last film affects Batman's journey in this one. Um, now, you know, like, like that's amazing. And then just a lot of the Bruce Wayne scenes alone, I think, are incredible. 
I think he, he was already a broken character, but in this one he's really broken by the events of the last one. He has seen what Batman has, him being Batman has done to the people in his lives. Um, which was strongly shown in the last film, which I love that scene, by the way, in the last one, with him just reflecting on his life. But you have, you know, this party going on. It's like, oh, it's great. Yeah, everything's amazing. Oh, it's great to see you. It's like, would you like that? Thank you. Thank you. It's like, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. And you get this, like, really nice kind of party sequence. It's very well lit, um, kind of similar to the way Inception looked. You know, and I love how all three films have, have their own unique style, but they all have their Christopher Nolan style. It's like, oh, it's amazing. It's like, yeah. It's like, when is this Bruce Wayne guy going to come out? It's like, yeah, I, I, Wayne, he hasn't been seen in years. And then you have, you know, it's like, you have Anne Hathaway as, um, fucking, what's your face? You have her as Catwoman. And she's walking around like, you want this? You want this? Yep, yep, it's great. It's like, thank you. It's like, oh, thank you. Hi, how are you doing? It's like, yeah. Sorry, charming and all that. And then you see her kind of looking up. He hasn't been seen in years. And then you see Bruce Wayne at the top of like this, his like, you know, mansion. And I believe it's a different mansion. Yeah. I, do you know what? I actually, did we see the mansion in the Dark Knight? Like, did we? I don't think we did. But yeah. So you get that. And then it was all around. I was like, oh, it's nice to meet you. I like. So I was like, oh, hi. It's like, yeah, it's like, what's your name and all that? It's like, oh, my name is, uh, I, I think she, I don't know if it says that. It's like, uh, Kyle. It's like, Miss Kyle. That's nice, you know. <clears throat> it's only to meet you. It's like, oh, Mr. Wine is up there. It's like, where is he, Alfred? It's like, oh, he's up there. No. And then, I believe, I, I don't know if we have Gary Oldman there. It's like, oh, do you know where Wayne is? It's like, oh, he's up there. It's like, oh, okay, cool. You know, it's like. It's nice to meet you. And I was like, a commissioner, I like what you're doing. Huh? Yeah, we're, we're doing this for Gotham. You know, it's great. And, you know, the dialogue flows around. It's like, yeah, well, we, I expect good things from you. The other thing I want to mention, right, and I didn't mention this in my Dark Knight review, is I, because I watched Bates Motel, all of Bates Motel for the first time, season one through five, uh, near the end of last year. And uh, the cop in that, is actually in these two films, Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, as the mayor. And he comes back in this one, and he's like, oh, it's great, Gordon, I get to see you, you know, you're doing great. It's like, yeah, we got to do a lot of things for the country, for this, yeah, maybe Batman comes back. It's like, yeah, he's a criminal, he killed people. It's like, yeah, you know, and, you know, you have moments where it kind of flashes back to Harvey Dent like that. It's like, yeah, and like, oh, Harvey Dent was a hero, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know. See if that is like, Mr. Wayne be waiting for you. It's like, yeah, well, we haven't seen him in a while. He's ghost, he's dead or whatever. It's like, yeah. And then I love this kind of like urban legend. It's like, it's like, uh, oh, uh, Mr. Wayne. Yeah, God, he's old. He's probably got like a long beard and long, and he's dirty and he's old and crippled and long fingernails. And he's like, long fingernails. Like, yeah. And all that. So then she walks up and stuff, and you get great shots. Like, oh, I'm the guy this way. It's like, oh, yeah, sure. And you know, the maids are in the kitchen and stuff. It's like, uh, come on, ladies, this way. Okay, do this. Right, right, great. It's like, thanks, Alfred. It's like, oh, follow me this way, you know. And once again, Michael Caine, he's phenomenal in this film. But I think he's great as Alfred in all three of these films. But I think this could be his strongest performance as Alfred. Because, oh. The, the, the scene at the end with him is fucking heartbreaking. And I'm going to get into that in a bit. But, um, like, oh, fucking hell. He's just, he is phenomenal in this film. And I can see why Christopher Nolan has had him as a regular in all of his films. Now, he wasn't in Oppenheimer, unfortunately. Unless he had a cameo in it. But I don't think he did. Um he's phenomenal and I'm going to get into that in a second but then you have Bruce Wayne looking down he's broken and you know I, you believe you do have Miss Tate's like oh it's nice to meet you Alfred it's great you know and she's like it's nice to meet you Miss Tate this way he's like when I was like where's Mr. Wayne oh he might be down I might introduce you like oh you know it's like yeah 
you know, stuff would be lovely and all that. And so you have all that kind of little character building and dialogue. And I like that. I still love the slower dialogue scenes. The more like, oh, everyone talking about it in the city and the moments with the bat signal and stuff, you know. Um, and just the fact that Batman has been retired for eight years. And it's like a nice blend because it's like, it's kind of like repistry. Repistry. Fucking Jesus. Anyway, history is repeating itself. You know, I love that aspect of like, oh, is history repeating itself kind of thing. Because the first movie, you know, or in the first in the Nolan trilogy, you know, you had the fact that he was missing for seven years. And now he's been missing for eight years, you know. So I like that kind of, he's going back to square one. It's all coming full circle, you know. So it's a nice little full circle moment for his character. So, mm. but yeah, so love that. And then Bruce Wayne is up in his room, masturbating. No, I'm talking. <laughs> Wasn't masturbating, right? I need comedy. Um, so he's up there. He's like kind of walking around, like oh yeah, whatever. And he's just there, like like you have no, you have um Anne Hathaway, and like first of all. On rewatch, right, because I, I watched this, like, I've been watching this the past couple years. I watched it last year, the year before, and this year, right? Last year to lead up to the Batman, and this year to lead up to Oppenheimer. <laughs> and essentially, I noticed on the rewatch, right, like, I was kind of, I wasn't sure if I liked Anne Hathaway as Catwoman, because one, Michelle Pfeiffer is the best. Either Michelle Pfeiffer or... Zoe Kravitz, they're great. <laughs> no, Halle Berry. No. But Harry, oh, Halle Berry's gorgeous. <clears throat> but I think Anne Hathaway is a very good cat woman. And she's very different. And I do like her. And you have to remember, like, before this, the last cat woman we had was Halle Berry in Catwoman. So it was kind of nice to see Anne Hathaway in this movie. So, you know, she's walking up, she's like, oh, hi. And he's like looking around, he's like, oh, and she's looking at the pearls, like, oh, sorry, Mr. Wayne, sorry. And he's walking, he's like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. She's like, yeah, sorry, I, I wasn't expecting to see you here. Although, no one's seen you in years, although you don't have long nails or fingernails or anything. And like, you see her walking up the stairs and all this. And he's like, is that what people say about me? It's like, oh, that among other things. Like, yeah. And then you get these very sort of, um, very dark moments, right? Well, not dark moments. You get this kind of, like, suspicious moments. Like, where did you get these pearls? Like, they're, oh, I don't know. It's like, I bought them somewhere. It's like, yeah, it's just that they look very similar to the ones my mother got me. Or, my mother had before she died. It's like, oh, sorry. It's like, you didn't steal them, did you? It's like, oh, sorry about that. And then just, Anne Hathaway, she just goes from being all nice and sweet and switches to being sinister like that. And she does that so fucking brilliantly. It's like, oh, sorry, Mr. Wayne. And she fucking kicks him over. He's like, oh, shit, and falls on the crib. He's like, sorry. Got to run the cripple. Runs away. He's like, oh, god damn it. And she runs off. He's like, yeah. How? He's like, how are you? He's like, oh, I'm fine, yeah. And she goes off. And then you're just kind of like, oh, fuck. Um, and then you have a thing. It's like, and then Alfred comes like, oh, what, Mr. Wayne? He's like, yeah, we have a jewel thief. And then he's looking through the thing. He's like, got to lock the safe. And even before that, she says, like, no, because I usually lock my safe like this. And, you know, he opens it. Like, and usually, the, and for some reason, the pearls are missing and all that. And she's like, oh, sorry about that, you know. And that kind of fucking, like, oh, shit moment, you know. And, um... So I got a jewel, jewel thief, and he's looking through. It's like Selena Kyle. Oh, Selena Kyle, that's mad. Stay your mom's necklace. And I was like, yeah, I don't know what's happening. You perhaps you want to meet Miss Tate? It's like, no, I'm not sure, Alfred. I don't want to be set up on anyone. I don't care. I want you to be happy. I don't know, and I want you to be happy. My or fucking kind, right? I want you to be happy. It's like, look, I don't. Need this, Alfred. I just want to know what happened, okay? You know, that kind of shit's going on. And, like, there's that, that's a great, like, conversation. It's like, okay. You know, it's like, it's like, what do you want to do? It's like, I want to figure out who this girl is. All right. As in, stop it in the past and walks off and stuff. And I do love those moments. 
and then you get moments with Commissioner Gordon, like, oh, yeah, Harvey Dent's great, yeah, you know, you know, the people's like, yeah, we, we have hope with the Batman, it's like, yeah, we got a lot of situations, there's a guy named Bane, he's doing this, it's like, oh, God, yeah, we gotta figure out who this guy is and stuff, and all that kind of shit, so I like that aspect, so if this happened, a plane crash happened here, it's like, oh, that's crazy, it's like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, and all that, and I love the introduction of Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character. And one, I've said this before in my review of Looper, I think. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is one of my favourite actors. I think he is an incredible actor. He is so talented. I love 500 Days of Summer. I love 10 Things I Hate About You. I love 50-50. Um, I love Looper, I love Inception, which is also a Chris Nolan film. I love Sin City 2 with Aim to Kill For, the little role he had in Halloween H2O and Knives Out, and Glass Onion and Knives Out story, and the small cameo he had in the interview, and I love The Night Before, and I love Don John, which he directed. He is a fucking phenomenal actor, and I love his addition in this film. He is such a great fucking character. I love him as a cop, he was likeable, he was believable, you know, love him in this film, so you have that moment, he meets Christian, he's like, hey, chief, nice to meet you, he's like, yeah, how are you, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I worked in the orphan, I'm a, the orphanage, I'm working, he's like, I've been a cop for a while, I appreciate your work, he's like, oh, I mean, do I know your son, he's like, yeah, yeah, I do, so you think he'd come, he's like, oh, no, no, you know, we gotta do it, it's like, we gotta find out who this guy is, Bane, it's like, yeah, yeah, we gotta do that, Solve the crimes and all that. And then you have these moments where we're walking around and you get this moment where he's like, yeah, what are you going to do? What are, how are we going to do? It's like, you got to do this, that, and the other. We got to go this way. He's like, get this hot head out of here. You know, there's a cop there. Let's get this hot head out of here. He's like, okay, whatever. You know, and like, he actually makes a good suggestion and the cop is still being a fucking dick. And then you get this great. He's like, I got a question for you. He's like, yeah, about Harvey Dent. He's like, yeah, oh, he was a great guy. He's like, yeah, he's like, well, I wrote, you know, a lot of things happen, but I have a question for you, you know, about Batman. It's like killing your friends. It's like, it's like, you know, Batman's doing this and that, saving people. Why do you think he killed Harvey Dent? You know, and for the whole movie, it's like, Batman killed Harvey Dent. He's a scumbag. Batman killed Harvey Dent. And it shows how quick the public are to judge and how they'll believe anything. You know, which is like politics in real life. That like, Harvey Dent was a, Harvey Dent? Harvey Dent was a corrupt bastard. Um, and the public needs their hero, and he's like, why don't you tell people the truth, like, people need their heroes, Alfred, and all that, that's what Bruce Wayne says, anyway, and you also have, okay, so you have all that, right, and he's like, I'm not ha hearing the question, so I was like, do you really think Batman killed him, he's like, yeah, he killed Harvey Dent, cold blood, I was there, it's like, really, yeah, okay, I'm not sure about that, he goes off, and as I said, every scene with him is great. It's like, and you know, you buy him as a cop. Well, perimeter set up here, here, and here. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's like, Chief, are we going to do this? Like, like, it's like, no, get this hot out of here. Chief, we got to do this now. It's like, oh, and the, the other guy's like, well, perimeter set up here, here. We got to do this. He's like, why don't we do this this way, Chief? And I was like, no, get out of here, man. You can't do that, you know? So you get that. And just in general, like, you have moments where he's like, I'm from the orphanage. You know, he says that to Gary Oldman. He's like, I'm from the orphanage. I was from the old boy was home. You know, was that, you know, he's like, oh yeah, th thanks. It's great. He's like, and I want to do, be a cop to serve my country. It's do well and stuff. And he's like, well, I respect that. It's fun. I really respect that. You know? Um, and then there's a, like, there's like a moment, I think it's in this film. Or is it the last one? Where he's like, did you know why they're going up Gordon? What are you doing? Why is Batman doing this? And he's like, I don't know why this is happening. You understand? And he says that, I believe. He shouts at him. He's like, I don't know why he's doing this. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know. He doesn't say fuck. He's like, I don't know what's happening. He says that to Joseph Gordon. He's like, I don't know. Okay? So he's like, yeah. So, I love that. And I love those little moments. And Joseph Gordon-Levitt is a character you sympathize with. You feel bad for him. He's an orphan. He's, you know, he's gone through a lot. And he's trying to figure out, like, okay, what what's happening? Why is this happening? Why is this silly Kyle? What, what's happening with her and all that? 
you know, as so I get those moments, and I love um the scene where he goes around to like an orphan's and like he's like, oh, it's great. Oh, and there's a kid doing it. He's like, what are you drawing? And he's drawing the bot thing. I was like, oh, you know him? He's like, yeah, of course I know him. You really think you, you ever think he's gonna come back? He's like, I don't know. That's insane. I, I don't, I'm not sure, kid. I don't know, but you're gonna keep doing that. Be good. Doing school. Stay in school. Do all this. Be good. He's like. Yeah, sure. He's like, I think we gotta do this, that, and the other. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's good, right? You get, you get on that and all that, and like all this real cop talk. So I like all of those little moments. But that scene where he's talking to the kid and he's like, "You ever think Batman's gonna come back?" And he's like, "Yeah, uh, I don't know. I hope he does. It'd be great." He's like, "Yeah." And he even asks Gary Oldman, "Ever think he's gonna come back?" He's like, "I don't know. I, I, I don't know, son. I don't think so. I'm not sure. You know." But the idea. Like, it's just like, I love this idea. Of, like, I think people need the Batman and all that. And you got to put everybody's like, I don't know. I can't do this, Alfred, you know. And th it's called The Dark Knight Rises for many reasons. Because he's been out, right? He's been gone. Bruce Wayne has been gone. And the first portion of the film is him trying to rise up and come back to society. And then... You know, trying to fit in with everyone. And then obviously the, the portion where he's stuck in the hole and trying to get out of the fucking thing. So that's reason why it's called that. Um, but yeah. And then you get many scenes with like your woman. is like, oh, nice to see you again. It's like, oh, yes, it's great. Yeah, and you get m many scenes with Miss Tate. Like, oh, that that's great. Thank you so much, Alfred. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, all that. And I enjoyed those moments. But, um, yeah, what other scenes do I want to talk about? Back in a second now, hey. So, yeah, um, I uh, just went to go get a have piss, right? I look like fucking Thanos at this motherfucker. Anyway, so I love all the kind of the moments, Joe's Gordon Levitt. And, you know, the first part of him is, oh, is, it, is Bruce Wayne going to come back? Is, you know, was hopefully Batman comes back. So was Batman's a psychopath and all that. Now, for I do wonder, like, how they don't put two and two together in that moment. But at the end of the day, it's like, whatever. I don't care. So, okay. I'm trying to remember different scenes. I love the relationship between Alfred and Bruce Wayne in this film. I think the way it's explored in this film is phenomenal i it's just amazing like you believe the fucking bond that they have and there's moments that are just so fucking heartbreaking um you know so he's always coming in and pestering him he's like okay Alfred, what, what do you want it's like i want you to get out of the house i want you to go meet someone you are so capable your father I mean, your mother would be proud. He's like, you can't use that as an excuse, Alfred. You know, I, I don't. I'm not my father. Like, you are. You have a great legacy. People need the back name. They need Bruce Wayne. Or maybe they don't need the back name. They need Bruce Wayne. You should run. And save the city yourself as Bruce Wayne, not Batman, or something around, or something along those lines. Anyway, he, he does say things to contradict himself. I don't need that. I'm not like that. People like Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent try to kill you and all that. You know, try to kill Gordon, Commissioner Gordon's family and all that. So you get those moments and it's like, I don't know that. And he kind of wants He's like, you inspire people. You can make your city, Gotham City, Gotham City, right. You know. And then, he's like, I don't know, Alfred. So different scenes, he's passionate. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then, he's like, I can't do that, Alfred. You got to get off my back. And he's like, I'm only trying to help you, Mr. Wine. He's like, stop trying to set me up. I think you want to my, organize with Miss Tate, you know. It's like, I, I don't want to be set up, Alfred. He's like, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you do understand Alfred's, like, I guess, frustration. And, like, the, the, the emotions on Christian Bale's face when, you leave, when he's just kind of looking away. And he's like, that's what you do. It's your choice. And he walks off and he has that kind of, you know... Michael Caine is that kind of sad um, face, like Alfred, and oh, it's just 
the, the acting is just incredible. Um, like, like another thing is, like, I, I don't think there's a weak actor in this movie. I think everyone is great. Ben Mendelsohn's in it as well. Like, he's in it. And, like, it's so funny. I don't even think I know. Like, how the fuck have I only noticed that recently? But he is in this film. Um, maybe it's because I watched that god-awful Secret Invasion show. It's a fucking rant coming for you. Anyway. But, um... Yeah, and just... You know, and, and like, there's a lot of, um... There's a lot of great moments, right? So, you have... Just like the first two... Or mainly the first one, you have these moments where there's people in the meetings like, oh, we got to do this and discuss Mr. Wayne. We got to discuss what's happening. We have to know what's going on. And then you also do have the guy that was in The Dark Knight, the guy that was like, I think you're, you're you know, that your client's a vigilante. He's like, you really think he dresses up as a vigilante every night? You have him in this. And you get, I like these boardrooms. Like, why do we got to... Cancel Mr. Wayne. He hasn't been part of the company for years. Maybe we got to withdraw him, withdraw him and all that. And then you have um, Ben Mendelsohn's character. Being like, yeah, I think Mr. Wayne can't be part of this company. I think he's just, you know, it's a problem. The Batman's a problem. You had Harvey Dent's a problem. You got to do this. And then you have the guy from the first one who was also in following as well, which I thought was great. He's like, oh, I, don't know, I suppose, you know, it's not. Mr. Wayne's not part of this company. And then... Um, oh, that's like, oh, we gotta do this, that, and the other, you know, and then you get multiple scenes of them, like, talking, it's like, we have to do this for the company, and then they're walking out, you know, we have to do this for that, and, you know, we have to do this for Wayne Enterprises, and all this, and you get multiple scenes of them in board meetings, talking, like, yes, we gotta do this, that, and the other. Um, it's like, for the city, you know, and you've got moments where it's like, I want this now, I want to discuss this now, whatever's happening, you know, and you do, like, he is in a good chunk of the film for a part, like Ben Mendelsohn, and he's great in the small, limited screen time he has, and Ben Mendelsohn is a great actor, he's probably the best, one of the best things about Rogue One, a Star Wars story, which I don't like, I don't like that film, and he was great in Ready Player One, he's, he's actually the best part of fucking Captain Marvel, and one of the best things about Secret Invasion, He's also in Spider-Man Far From Home. So he's great. You know, he's a good actor. He's like, we gotta know. I wanna know what's happening. He's like, I don't know what's happening with this company. He's like, I need to know soon, you know? I gotta know this. I'm not trying to make fun of his list, by the way. I just, it's an impression, so whatever. He's like, yeah, we gotta know what's happening. And all that. And he's like, yeah, yeah. This is like, cool. So, dad, that's great. Yeah, whatever. Let's go. And they're drinking and all that. And I love how, in a way, this film is kind of like a re-origin again. Like, he's becoming Batman again. Like, because if you notice, I haven't talked much about the scenes with Batman. I'm going to get to them soon. This will be a long review. This will be one of the longest reviews I do. A lot of my Nolan reviews are going to be like this. I like to talk about movies in great detail. But all those scenes I mentioned, I just love them. I love the dialogue. I love the editing. I think it's entertaining, the way it's shot and edited smoothly. And just the little politics and real realism that these films have. I love that about this trilogy. And Nolan brings his own style. He uses practical effects, like practical explosions. No CGI, or maybe a little bit, but like, you know, the flying part of the plane at the beginning is fucking awesome, you know? And you have Joseph Gordon-Levitt and see like, come on guys, come on, let's go. And it kind of cuts the different people in the city, like the mayor being like, okay, we're going to do that, we're going to do this, okay, it's fine, it's like, come on, Gordon, and then it's cutting to the car, like, Gordon's like, yeah, we got to do this, it's like, for the city, you got to come to this event, you come to that event, Gordon, it's like, yeah, and then you have the moments where they're making speeches to the public, just like the last film, where it's like, we are going to do this for Gotham, it's like, Mr. Mayor, it's like, okay, I, I can't answer it, no more questions, I can't answer that, you know, so there's a lot of those kind of political moments throughout the film, where it's like, we have to work together as citizens of Gotham to be prepared. That's all I'm saying. Oh, Mr. President, Mr. Senator, Senator, you know, all that. And there's loads of things going on. One's like, come on, cops, we gotta go, we gotta go. And there is multiple shots in the film that I love. The big fucking wide panning shots of the city at daytime, at nighttime. The shots that just pan in and over the fucking city and through the city and just... They're sprinkled throughout the movie, which is a long movie. 
it's 164 minutes and it's the longest of the three and that's throughout the entire film and it's day when it's night even when the fucking Batmobile's flying near the end you know and it's just the size and scale and scope of this film is amazing and it's just really well shot it's just fucking perfect and you're never bored you're always entertained like now it is my least favorite of the trilogy right and sometimes, like, I, I don't really know why at times, but I, I'm going to get into... I, I think I, I can understand why. Um, I'll get into that, I think, a bit later. But, like, there's so many great scenes. Because, like, just like the last film, it, like, it just... Gotham City goes into complete chaos. Like, like, terrorism. Like, fuck it. Like, there's scenes later on as well where there's shots of the city and there's smoke everywhere and there's pings being blown up and it's... It feels like this really big epic finale and it's great that we have a finale to this film. Like, like this is a, a movie franchise. This, this trilogy is a fucking trilogy that I don't think you're going to be able to touch. Now, technically... One of the DC directed DVD animated films, Gotham Knight, is actually set in the universe of this. But Christopher Nolan is a movie, is a director that I feel like will leave this trilogy alone. And there will never be, they'll never include this version of Batman in multiverse stuff. They didn't in The Flash, which I'm fucking happy they didn't. Because this is more grounded in reality. Not too much, but parts of it are. So I love that, you know? And you get these, okay. You get moments in the film, right? With Bane. Now, Bane, as I said, he is menacing as fuck, right? The guy, you got people like, okay, come on, let's go. Come on, we gotta go this way. Come on, he's bringing stuff down, building shit down. He's like, come on, let's go. And then, Bane is just there sitting like that. He's like, how oh, did you get everything we need? It's like, yeah, we got this, the explosives, you got it. We need Commissioner Gordon. We need that. And, you know, and I love the fucking water, like fucking the waterfall visual. And it's dark flowing down on the screen and on the water. And just the costume as well, like the fucking muzzle thing. It's like, yeah, and he gets up. He's like, we need that now. Oh, it's going to be a problem, you know. And I don't know why he sounds like Christopher Walken having an orgasm the way I'm fucking doing it. But um, he's like, yes. It's like, yes, yeah, so go get it now. I was like, yes, yes, sir. So go get it now. You know, like, yeah. And they're running and stuff. And you just have this big, as I said, this big epic fucking feeling. I love it. And that scene is great. The visual is great. The shot. The direction by Christopher Nolan. It just flows really well. And you're always gripped. The story and writing is gripping. The dialogue is great. I love Bane's dialogue. It's memorable. It's become iconic. It's become a big part of cinema. And yes, I do think the Dark Knight trilogy is cinema. I think that this is cinema. I won't. I kind of. I do agree with Scorsese's statement about superhero films in general, but I really do think that the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy, and especially the new Batman film. Well, not that it came out last year, but The Batman by Matt Reeves, our cinema. And Joker as well. Cinema. And I love it. You get that. And fucking, you just have these moments, right? Where, okay, you've been doing that, right? And then you have Bane's actions is what causes Bruce Wayne to want to come back. As Batman. And I love that. I love that. I, and everyone else. It's like Gotham needs you. You know. And proven in this film. Gotham needed Batman. And Bruce Wayne. They needed. Batman and Bruce Wayne. Because it was. Fucked without them. You know. So. That aspect is just awesome. And then. You have the whole. Like. Like Bane. You have the whole scene. Um. With Selena Kyle and the gang members. Like they're going around like. Oh yeah let's go. And also. The blonde chick. She has a blonde chick friend. Who I believe is the same kind of character. That was in. Uh, the, the Batman Robert Pattinson. 
the one that got murdered in a really graphic scene with Carmine Falcone in The Batman. And essentially, she's like, oh, yeah, hi, are we going to go rob the place? Like, no, okay, it's gonna, we got to go do this. Like, okay, fine, it's great. And there, she's hugging, it's like, are we going to go? It's like, yeah, we're going to go. And Hogan is, like, kissing them on the head. And they're and just like, girls, kiss. <laughs> that was cringe. I'm going to edit that out. It's like Blasphemous HD shit. So, like, yeah, let's go. And then they're walking and stuff. It's like, come on, we got to go rob this. It's like, okay, whatever, let's go. We got to do this, and they're walking, and then you get this moment, and like you get good Catwoman action in this as well, and Hathaway Catwoman action. And it's none of this like oh setting up a future movie or any of this shit. Like it's it's just great action from this character. So this gangster's like, you know, we ready to do this? Yeah, we're going in. You got the fuck. You got to do this. You know, understand? Yeah, you know, and they're in like this kind of bar, and she comes in like, oh, hi, it's great to see you guys, honey. It's great, and all that. It's like, yeah. Well, you're not going to be a dumb broad, are you? And all that. Um, and essentially, he's like, oh, I don't like being called that and stuff. And essentially, it's like, yeah, it's great. So you got to get the pearls now, you know? And it's like, oh, you're going to make a goddamn mistake, you know? And you get this kind of intense scene, and it's kind of, oh, shit. It's kind of like, oh, what's going on here? It's like, you got to get that, right? And then there's a woman there, I believe the blonde's like, hey, come on, we gotta go, you know, and before that, like, no, I don't know what's happening, it's like, do you know what's happening, it's like, oh, no, I don't know, and they're walking, and I think before that, it's like, you're gonna go in, and they're like, in another room, it's like, okay, no, it's fine, I'll do this, I'll, I'll sort it out, it's like, you sure, it's like, yeah, and they walk out, it's like, okay, okay, it's fine, and Anne Hathaway just does a great job here, it's like, yeah, you ready, yeah, it's like, okay, grab her, grab her, and he goes, he's like, no, it's like, it's like, oh shit, and then bang, bang, and then, and then she starts fucking people up left and right, and then you have cops like, okay, God, we gotta find out what's going on, and John's like, where are you, where were you, you gotta be here, come on, let's go, and they're just running around and stuff, and they're like, and she's just like, fuck, fucking people up left and right, and, f and they're like, going up, and there's this guy like, you sure, it's like, you alright, it's like, no, it's like, oh, oh, and all that stuff, and like, she just goes, no, not worried, like, and she grabs him, like, yeah, whatever, and then she just, like, I know if it's in that scene, but there is a scene where the guy kind of tries to grab her, it's like, you're okay, it's like, yeah, I'm fine, and twists his, and she fucking twists his hand, and he's like, ah, 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 and all, it's just, like, so badass, and the cops come in, and shoot, like, no, 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 and I think Richard Gordon goes in, and she just goes, ah, oh, god, no, and she's like, did you steal the, the thing, and she steals things and stuff, the pearls, and he's like, oh, and she kind of looks around, they walk around, like, come on, come on, they're in the alleyway, and I think, Joe's going to live and goes, Mam, you okay? It's like, they we went that way. And the girl's like, oh my God, what's happening? And they're running off and stuff. And, you know, that scene's great. It's like, come on, let's go. And like, are you okay? It's like, yeah, I'm fine, whatever. And walk, she walks off, runs away. It's like, God damn it. What's happening? Okay, we got to follow him. You ready, Gordon? Yeah, let's go. It's Joe's going to live and uh, Gary Allman, they run off and get that great, awesome scene. And they're like, fuck, that was fucking class. Um, and they're like, come on, let's go. And they're running down, like, the kind of dark cave and shit. And so I thought that whole sequence was just done really, really well. You know, and they're like, oh, fuck. So I love that whole scene there. It was just like, yes. Um, And you get more scenes, like, throughout the film with Anne Hathaway and the blonde chicks. Like, oh, are you okay? It's like, yeah fine and then like when the chaos is happening in the city he's like are you sure that you're okay that you done that and she's like yeah i know i'm leaving it's like where are you going it's like i don't know i just gotta go gotta get out of town it's like and then like then there's like explosions and stuff it's like yeah is this the chaos that you wanted he's like yeah i'm not sure if i wanted this and she's like but this is what you wanted isn't it and she's like no and then walks out and i was like come on this is what you wanted like this chaos and then there's, there's times where she's like oh god you know and she's um there like that when all the shit goes down kind of thing like when banks are getting robbed and all this other kind of shit you know and it's like oh that's that's insane you know and what's happening and i don't know if she's in the bank or she's on screen with bane at one point and all that it's like this is what you wanted you wanted a fire to rise and all that stuff and it's like no and then i believe there's a point where it's like no and they grab her and just shoot her and then like later on they see her body and like seeing like or in Batman where I was like yeah and this is what it is and they show her body and she's just kind of like no what she cries and she's dead so they which is something they do in the new Batman film as well but we see she sees her body and it's like god damn it you know 
Um, and it's just like, oh fuck. So there's a lot of like, stakes in this film. A lot of steak. A lot of steak, you understand? Good steak. Good fucking steak, you understand? Um, yeah, so that's really my review. But no, I'm joking. So, um, yeah, so I love that, and I love the whole, uh, what's the other thing I love? So that's great. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that wee little thing. Um, what's another goddamn scene I wanted to talk about? Because there's a lot I want to talk about in this, in this picture, this flick. So I love all of that moments. Like the, like the, the, I like the relationship between her and the friend. The chemistry is very good. I get a bit of a lesbian vibe off them, but I think they're just friends. It's not implied. I like the dead, like like the how dark it is when she dies and stuff. The sexual stakes, you know. So I, I love those kind of aspects. The dark, gritty kind of aspect of the film. So I enjoy that. Um, what else was I gonna say? I was going to say something else there. Fuck. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to just uh, I'm gonna take a little break. This will be edited, so you'll see this in one part. I think I just, like, I'm going to treat these like podcasts. I'm going to take a little break every now and again when I'm a little bit out of breath or whatever. Because I, I enjoy, I like doing long movie reviews, you know, and I just want to hit time to breathe and catch my breath and stuff. So, yeah. Um, yes, amazing, you know. So, uh, yeah. But, um, yeah. So, I will be back. I'll see you guys in a bit.